Yes. Bless the Lord. can search.
speak it over your life. Anything you're going through, you have the victory in the name. Precious name, Satan, Satan, oh, tell me, when we, we call on nobody but Jesus.
none like excellent is thy name in all the earth. Is there anybody in here that's just willing to give God some glory and praise right there? To know that even though we got a name like COVID-19 spreading throughout our world, that COVID-19 has no power like Jesus has. I just need to, for y'all to begin to lift up the name that's higher than any name. Somebody give me praise right there. Somebody say, Jesus, how excellent. How excellent he is. Come on, come on. I need for you to begin to lift up his name. Because at the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, I need somebody to just walk around your living room and begin to say, there's none like you. There's no one like you. There's no one greater than you. Come on, begin to worship him. Begin to give him glory. Begin to give him praise. How excellent. Yes, God. He's your name. name is excellent. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of the adulation. Come on and say, he's excellent. Glory in this place. Lord, begin to go right there and begin to lift up a worship right there. Come on and say, how excellent is your name, Lord. How glorious is your name, Lord. How powerful is your name, Lord. Come on, come on, begin to lift his name above your circumstance. Come on, come on, lift him up right now. Come on, help me lift Jesus right now. Come on and lift up his name. Begin to give him glory. Begin to say, Jesus. Begin to call out that name that has power. Begin to call out that name that has healing. Begin to call out that name that's got deliverance. Come on, give him glory. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Glory in this place. Glory in this place. Glory in this place. Good morning, Van Street. Man, how excellent is the name that we serve on today. That is the name of Jesus Christ, who came, bled, and died for us. But he didn't leave us lonely, y'all. He sent us the Holy Spirit to reside and preside over us. And we are thankful today that we serve a living God. We serve a God that has not forgotten about us and knows exactly how to get our attention and to meet us where we are. We are indeed thankful to have you worshiping with us this morning all on our worship platform today. We have people that are members here at Van Street, but we have visitors who are from Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, Maryland, uh, Puerto Rico. We are just excited to have you. California, we are excited to have you all worshiping with us on today. And we're not going to wear your patience long. We're going to move on in our sermon series, Win God. Today, we're going to ask you to go to the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter number 13, starting at about verse number 10. 
we're going to be reading from the New Living Translation of this particular passage of text. We are moving into our second installment of this sermon series, Luke chapter 13, starting at about verse number 10, will claim our attention this morning. Verse 10 says, one Sabbath day, as Jesus was teaching in a synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. She had been bent double for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. Then he touched her and instantly she could stand straight. How she praised God. But the leader in charge of the synagogue was indignant that Jesus had healed her on the Sabbath day. There are six days of the week for working, he said to the crowd. Come on those days to be healed, not on the Sabbath. But the Lord replied, you hypocrites. Each of you works on the Sabbath day. Don't you untie your ox and your donkey from its stall on the Sabbath and lead it out for water? This dear woman, a daughter of Abraham, has been held in bondage by Satan for 18 years. Isn't it right that she be released even on the Sabbath? This shamed his enemies, but all the people rejoiced at the wonderful things he did. Amen. Gracious God, we thank you. We thank you for your excellent name. We thank you for your amazing presence. We thank you for your all-knowing and all-having power. We thank you, Father God, that you have just allowed us one more day on this side of the Jordan. And we pray right now, Lord God, that as we hide ourselves behind your cross, that they will see none of me but hear all of you. Begin to give us applications and principles, Father God, to help us along this Christian journey. We thank you even now, Lord God, for what you're about to do in this place. We thank you for how you're going to bless those who are worshiping with us on our platform. We thank you thus far, Lord God, what the worship team has done and how they have set the atmosphere. I pray now, Lord God, that you will continue to reside and preside in us right now. Bless our platform. Bless our members. Bless our visitors. Bless everybody that's a part of this ministry, Lord God. We thank you now, Lord God, from the depths of our heart. Now do it like you have always done it before, Lord God. Preach a word in this place that will help us along this Christian journey. Lord God, we just want to say we love you, we magnify you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I like this text right here, y'all. I like this text. For our second message in the series, When God, I want to preach from the thought and from the theme as the Spirit shall guide. When God sees you, when God sees you. Magic, an important principle that I'm finding to be more and more true on my journey with God is that I need to see myself as God sees me. Too many times I've made the mistake of viewing myself from the vantage point of how others see me which in essence allows others to define and create my worth. The reason why this becomes significant is because the people I'm viewing myself through are just as messed up as I am. They've got issues just like I do. Uh, they are broken just like I am. So what I am finding is that I am valuing myself on a broken system that cannot truly identify my worth and value. Perhaps even more troubling is that many times we devalue ourselves because we only see ourselves through the lens of our failures and mistakes. And it creates a mindset of how could a worthless sinner like me have any value? How am I supposed to see value in myself when all I seem to do is fall short? How am I supposed to see hope when all I see are obstacles designed to keep me trapped? How am I supposed to see peace 
when I am constantly at war with my flesh? How am I supposed to see joy when all I see are bitterness and hatred around me? How am I supposed to see love when all I see is pain and despair? How am I supposed to see my destiny when it is surrounded and clouded with chaos and the disappointments that life can bring? And what happens for many of us is that when we experience repeated failures and disappointments, it begins to lessen our expectations of the future. Instead of striving for greatness, you find yourself settling for just getting by. So if somebody on this worship platform understands what it means to have your expectations extinguished by the ever-changing conditions of your reality. Because what you see doesn't match what you expect. God, help me. So now you're trying to figure out how do you stand in faith when you see evidence that says something different. And, and this is why God has me preaching this message today. Because the solution to our struggles and the understanding that we have worth and value, despite what we have done or what we are currently going through, is that we have to see ourselves through the eyes of the Almighty God. We have to believe deep down in our hearts who God says we are. God, help me. Not who man says we are, but who God says we are. We have to understand that we are made in his image. And when God created us from the dirt of the earth, watch this, y'all. He said, it is very good. I wish I had somebody in here. It wasn't a certain skin color that made you, made you good. It wasn't just a certain style of hair that made you good. It was because God made you and he said it was very good. So if you're big or small, short or tall, white, black, Latino or Asian, no hair, short hair, straight hair, curly hair, nappy hair, red bone, yellow bone, big bone or black bone, God made us, which makes us all very good. I wish I had somebody to just type online right there that I am good, I am special because God made me that way. He custom made each one of us with different personalities, different looks, different skill sets, and different talents. And he entrusted each of us to rule and reign over the earth. And hear this, y'all. When even when mankind chose to sin and turn away from God, God did not throw us away, but he put in a plan that would restore the broken relationship that we had with him. Our turning away from God never changed our worth and our value and his love toward us. I love how Paul expresses God's feeling and affection towards us. He says that nothing can separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. In other words, you are always in God's vision. You are always the object of his affection. I wish I had somebody. You are always the apple of his eye. And when God sees you, he sees value and destiny in you. He sees purpose in you. In Jeremiah, God says, I know the plans I have for you, uh, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So the question that must be answered this morning is, how do I know if God sees me? How do I hang on when I feel like I'm all alone on this journey? How do I hang on to my hope while I'm in a struggle for my life? How do I stay rooted in God when I don't understand or like what God is doing to me? How am I supposed to see myself like God sees me? I'm glad y'all asked the questions this morning because our text this morning is tailor-made to help us arrive at the answers to these questions. At the beginning of this 13th chapter of St. Luke, we have Jesus giving us examples 
of the importance of repenting. He says that if you don't repent, regardless of your membership, your position in church, or your social status, you too shall perish. Then later on in this chapter, Jesus is beginning to teach us another very important concept. Jesus makes it clear that we must not equate earthly tragedy with divine punishment. Sin does not make atrocities come, but atrocities just come anyhow. Uh, whether you come to church or not, y'all need to hear me, all of us are going to have to deal with the hardships of life. The scripture says he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends the rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. No one is exempt from having trials and carrying burdens. And right after these few verses of these stories, these parables, we find a woman who has been coming to church afflicted with a demonic spirit of infirmity for 18 years. She has been carrying her burden to church for 18 years and not getting any better. So much so that the weight of this burden over time has physically bent her over. And now she cannot under her own power stand straight and look up anymore. So, so my initial question of the text, Junior, was why does she keep coming if she's not getting any better? <laughs> why, why is she still coming to church and she's not seeing any positive results? Uh, conventional wisdom says that if it's not working for you, that you should try something different. But, but God began to convict me right here, and he began to reveal and show to me, and this is my first point of the text, that God sees you when no one else sees you. Mm, mm, uh, 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 man, this is good. Uh, this, this woman comes to church for 18 years, afflicted by a spirit that will not let her stand straight. Get this, y'all. Um, uh, she's a member of the church, and yet she is still suffering. God help me. She has been bent over for 18 years, and no one notices her condition. Oh, Lord, help me. She's been bent over for 18 years, but yet despite no one noticing her, she still comes to worship. I, I like this, y'all. I like this because this woman doesn't allow her condition to impact how she worships. She is saying that her condition, that even though you have me bent over, that still does not stop me from praising the almighty God. Because my praising him is not conditional on how I feel. I wish I had somebody. See, some of y'all only know how to praise God when God is doing something good in your life. But I'm looking for somebody that's been through hell and high water this morning that can say, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will continually give God praise for how he is blessing me. And, and even though she is dedicated, even though she's coming in spite of her infliction, nobody from the church notices her. Uh, not the deacons, not the pastor, not the missionaries, not the ushers. I wish I had somebody to see this text with me. The text doesn't say that when the church sees her, but the text says when Jesus sees her. Isn't it a shame that many of you come to church so that the pastor can see you, so that others can see you, but you fail to miss out that the reason why you come to church is to give God glory, and just maybe if you would give him some glory on this platform, he will see you and come and see about you. God, help me right here. Uh, uh, she, 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 isn't it a shame, y'all, that we could have a person in our church worshiping with us, afflicted by a demonic spirit, and watch this, the church does nothing. As a matter of fact, the church is so blind that they cannot see what's going on right in the sanctuary. And even worse, even worse, y'all, maybe they are ignoring 
what they are really seeing. God, help me. I, I see you have a problem, but I refuse to address it in a way that can bring healing to the situation. Instead of helping you, I would rather talk about you. God, help me. I'm on somebody's pew right here. Instead of helping you, I would rather judge and condemn you for the position that your life is in. And we've got far too many church folk who are busy trying to grab power and judge people and have positions that they cannot see or be a help to the people who are coming to the church looking for a blessing for their affliction. But I'm so glad that even when people don't see me, even when my neighbor doesn't see me, that God sees me when nobody else will see me. He sees you when you hit rock bottom. He sees you when you smile, but you're hurting on the inside. He sees you when you're doing public ministry, but your private life is falling all apart. And when he sees you, he has the ability to call you to him. Here is the good news and the shout of the morning that even though nobody else sees you, God sees you. When nobody else um, knows what you're dealing with, God knows what you're dealing with. No, when nobody else seems to care about you, God cares about you. When nobody else seems to love you, God loves you. And he knows how to speak to you, even if you're hidden bent over and in the middle of a crowd. Uh, don't miss this, y'all. When Jesus sees her, he calls her out of the crowd. It, it exposes her and her condition to everybody that is there. And, and it is here that Jesus begins to model and demonstrate for us that we shouldn't overlook people just because they don't stand up like you do. Okay, that was too generic. Just because they don't look like you and dress like you and talk like you. We shouldn't overlook somebody because they don't have the same educational pedigree that you do. We shouldn't marginalize people because of the color of their skin because it has them bent over. We shouldn't ignore those who can't stand up straight because of a systemic weight that they are having to carry in life. And when God sees you, and when God sees this woman, uh, she watch this, y'all. She doesn't allow her inability to fully see him to stop her from getting to him. Oh, God. But she moves toward his voice because Jesus calls her to him. And so now she has a made-up mind that she's going to get to him by any means necessary. And I'm talking to somebody in here that feels marginalized, that feels disenfranchised, that when God sees you and he calls you, you can't let nothing stop you from getting to the voice of God. Even though this condition, watch this, y'all, even though this condition has this woman walking funny, it makes her look weird because she's bent over and walking. It, 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 it Just because she's looking crazy to everybody else, it does not matter to her. She was willing to get to Jesus no matter what it took to get to him, no matter what people said about her, no matter how people looked at her, no matter how people talked about her, she was going to get to the, I'm trying to help somebody online this morning. If you got to crawl to him, you better go ahead and crawl to him. If you got to walk to him, you better go ahead and walk to him. No matter what it took, she was going to get to Jesus. And too many times, Van Street, we allow our pride we allow our dignity and what other people might think or say about us get in the way of us getting to Jesus and getting the healing that we so much need. But I'm going to be just like this lady. God help me. And I'm going to be like the lady with the issue of blood. I'm going to push my way through the crowd until I can get to touch Jesus so that I can be whole again. I'm going to push past what people think about me, push past my insecurities, push past everything I got going on in my life just to get to Jesus. So watch this, y'all. She comes to Jesus. After 18 years, her prayers have finally been answered. 
And what she began to realize was that Jesus, watch this, y'all, has not forgotten about her, that he still loved her and that she was still significant and had value in his eyesight. And can I let you know that he has not forgotten about you, that th this is not the time for you to think that you are less than anybody else. Uh, this is not the time for you to stop doubt, start doubting yourself and, and decrease your self-esteem. But this is the time for you not to give up because you are closer than you ever been to your breakthrough. I wish I had somebody say, I know that's right, Pastor. I got to dust myself off. I got to pick myself up. I got to stand on my own two feet, and I got to get my way to the Almighty God. I got to stop letting people pull me down. I got to stop letting crabs pull me back down in the barrel, but I got to pull myself up by the bootstraps, and I got to shake off some of this old stuff I got on and put on the newness that God has for me. Because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things become new. And watch this, y'all. Watch this, y'all. And Jesus says to this woman, he says, woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Here's, here's point number two of when God sees you. Watch this. When God sees you, it frees you. <laughs> now, now notice, the, now, notice the text, y'all. When Jesus said, woman, thou art loosed, that the woman was still bent over. Junior, even though she was free, she didn't know how to be free. <laughs> even though he had sent her a blessing, she didn't know how to receive the blessing. I, I compare this to when Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, which freed the slaves, and yet many generations of slaves stayed in slavery because they didn't know what else to do. God help me. They had been in bondage for so long that they didn't know how to be free. Sadly, many of us worshiping today are just like the slaves. Uh, all the official documents have been signed. All the legal matters have been taken care of. God has accepted the Emancipation Proclamation made by Jesus on Calvary when he said, it is finished. We have been set free forever. We are no longer in the bondage of our sins, our past, our guilt, or anything else that we might name. Yet we still live in bondage because we will not accept the freedom that is available to us in the name of Jesus. But Jesus says, not today. You've come too far to turn around now. Is there anybody online that says, I can't give up now? I've come too far to turn around now. So he touches the woman and she immediately stands straight and she went away glorifying God. I don't know about you, but it was his touch this morning, God help me, that woke me up early this morning. He stopped by my bedside magic and he touched me with a finger of love and I arose to see another day. It was his touch that opened the blinded man's eyes so that he could see again. It was his touch that healed a broken leper. It was his touch that raised Jairus' daughter and the widow's son from the dead. And it was his touch that delivered this woman because whom the son sets free is free indeed. So, so watch this, y'all. Not only does God see you when nobody else sees you, uh, uh, but not only when he sees you, it frees you. But lastly, when God sees you, watch this, y'all, it exposes your enemies. Um, uh, uh, magic, anytime you participate in an effective ministry, may I feel my help coming, uh, anytime you participate in an effective ministry, you're going to have to deal with some critics. Okay, let me say it like this. Anytime your ministry starts flourishing, you're going to have to deal with haters. Uh, uh, okay, I, I'm, I'm in the text. I'm in the text, Sean. I'm in the text. When Jesus sees this woman 
and he heals her, the ruler of the synagogue becomes indignant with Jesus and says, how can you heal on the Sabbath day? Is that what your Bible says? Um, Don't miss this, y'all. Jesus heals this woman, and the ones who have a problem with the healing are the preachers. In the text, y'all, they are called the chief ruler of the synagogue. He begins, to, watch this, the preacher, the pastor begins to tell the congregation that if you want to be healed, you need to come on the other six days of the week. But the Sabbath day was not a day for healing. Mm. And so now, y'all, I'm confused. I'm confused because it seems like this pastor is upset that one of his members has just been healed. I can't understand that, y'all, because people come to church to get a blessing, deliverance, and even healing. So, so how could this pastor be upset that one of his members just received a healing in front of everybody in the congregation? So, so I had to push pause here. I had to push pause. I had to figure out what's really going on in this text. And and here's what the Spirit revealed. It says, you have to understand that some people can't handle the favor that shines over your life. Because your favor outshines what they have. God, help me. So that when you shine, they don't see them anymore. God, y'all missing it right here. So they have to put rules and procedures into place to keep you from outshining their position. Y'all, y'all, y'all are missing this right here. And this preacher, watch this, gets mad with Jesus because he has healed this woman and has taken away his shine from the pulpit because she's been coming 18 years. Y'all are missing this whole thing. She's been coming 18 years. She's been bent over for 18 years. And Jesus calls her out in just this one service and gives her what she needs at this service. So instead of this preacher being happy and willing to celebrate with this woman, it exposes who he really is in his heart. So when God promotes you, watch this, y'all, he heals you, he blesses you, and delivers you, watch this, just so he can expose those around you who really mean you no good. God, help me. You want to see who is really on your side? Watch you get a blessing. See if the same people that was with you when you were down in the pit, will they be the same kind of ride or die when you were just like they were when you get on the come up? Or they start looking at you funny and say, it don't take all of that. Why you got to shout like that? Why you got to worship like that? Well, if you know what I've been through, you would know why I'm worshiping like this. You would know why I'm praising God like this. Because it was nobody but God that brought me out. So so watch this, y'all. Jesus calls these religious leaders out. He says, you hypocrites. Each of you works on the Sabbath day. Don't you untie your ox and your donkey from the stalls? Uh, He says, here is a daughter of Abraham, which means that she is a Jewish woman under the blessings and covenant of Abraham. And and she is in bondage by a spirit afflicted from Satan for 18 years. He says, don't you think it's right that she should be released even on the Sabbath day? These priests, watch this, y'all were willing to care more for their donkeys and their oxes than they did for this woman. Be careful of people who are willing to overlook you while elevating something that is designed to be less important than you. God help me. Be careful of policies that put money in large businesses but fail to help small businesses. Be careful of having the label essential employee when you have a pandemic, but when business is good, you are an expendable employee. Be careful of people who say black lives matter, but don't vote for policies that reinforce that black lives matter. And when God sees you, God help me, he will expose your enemies. 
And when the people see how Jesus has exposed the religious leaders, the people rejoice at all the things that he has done. Because when God sees you, God help me, may the Lord bless y'all real good. When God sees you, you can't help but to give God glory. You can't help but to give God a praise. David says it like this. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it because I will not let nobody or anything shut my mouth because when I think about his goodness and all he's done for me, I've got to holler. That's why I'm here to worship. I came to give him praise. I plan on giving him hearts today. I plan on shouting in my living room because God has been good to me. He saw me and he brought me through the storms. He saw me and delivered me from my enemies. He saw me and he healed my body. He saw me and made a way out of nowhere. So I got to holler. I've got to rejoice. I refuse to shut my mouth. I refuse to be quiet. Is there anybody online that can make some noise in your house and begin to shout in your home? Begin to shout on your block. Begin to shout in your neighborhood because you know that it was nobody but the Lord that brought you out. You know it was God that's been too good to you. You know it was God that saw you. And when God sees you, he begins to bless you. You didn't see me when I was sick. You didn't see me when I didn't have the money. You didn't see me when my family walked away. You didn't see me when the doctor shook his head. And if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, when he saw me, he turned my whole life around. When the doctor gave me a bad report, he saw me and he healed me. When I didn't have the money, he saw me and gave me what I needed. Didn't know how I was going to feed my children, but God saw me and he made a way out of no way. Is there anybody on this worship platform that can say, I know God saw me because he picked me up and he turned me around and he put my feet on a solid ground. That's why I got to holler because God sees me. You need to holler like you know who he is. You need to holler like you know he's a redeemer. You need to holler like you know he's a deliverer. You need to holler like you know he's a savior. That's why I'm worshiping today. Because I'm persuaded that nothing can separate us from the love of the almighty God. Because can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can somebody say he's my friend. He's my company He's my all in all. So why don't you just praise God? Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. If you got breath in your body, you need to go ahead and say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Praise him for his goodness. Praise him for his kindness. Praise him for his everlasting love. Can somebody say, yeah, I need to praise God. You need to praise God like you know he sees you. You need to holler like you know he sees you. Holler like you know he's your redeemer. Holler like you know he's your savior. Holler like you know he's your deliverer. Holler like you know that God is a good God. Can somebody say, I'm glad he sees me. I'm so glad he sees me. He sees value in me. He sees a future in me. 
He sees purpose in me. He sees destiny in me. He sees esteem in me. He sees value in me. He sees blessings in me. Come on, on live. He sees it in you. But can you see it in yourself? Stop walking around like you're sad and sorry. And say, God sees value in me. He sees worth in me. He sees a business owner in me. He sees a preacher in me. He sees an athlete in me. He sees a millionaire in me. Can somebody say he sees it in me? When nobody else sees it in me. But he sees it in me. There's a healing in you. Despite your mistakes, there is a blessing for you. Can somebody say when God sees me, he sees me, y'all. I got value today. I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm part of a royal priesthood. Can somebody say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Man, I feel good today. When God sees you, I don't care what other people say about you, he will cancel their opinion. I, I thought that would have shouted somebody right there. Because people have been telling you all your life, you can't do it. You will never amount to anything. Your daddy was no good, you're going to be no good. Your whole family is cursed. You will be cursed. Today is a day we, we, we take back our, our rightful place. I refuse to allow people to name me because they did not create me. God, help me. So I refuse to allow you to dictate the terms of my value. If God says I'm blessed, whoo, I'm blessed. If God says I'm the head and not the tail, then I'm going to be a leader. God, help me right here. If God says I'm in blessed in the field and in the city, why are you acting like you're poor? Whoo! Come on, y'all. It's time to take back the value in which God sees us. I know you made a mistake. I made a mistake too. I, I know you didn't want to do it, but your flesh got the best of you. We all have been there. But that does not mean that you got to live beneath your potential. Mm. It's time for you to get yourself up. And look, people are going to talk about you regardless. So let them talk about you getting blessed. L let them talk about you coming out of your circumstance. And if it helps you any, you just look at them and say, you're going to talk about me anyway. So why don't you go ahead and, yeah, I'm blessed. I, I got me some new shoes. I, I got a new car. And don't worry about it. More importantly than all the material stuff, he has freed me from people's opinions. <laughs> Woo! And now I can walk around with my head held high. I, I have now, I've got the strength to deal with the enemy that makes me feel like I'm less than. That's why so many of you are struggling right now. Because you feel like, I just can't turn this thing loose in my flesh. Maybe one of the reasons why you can't turn it loose is because you haven't seen yourself turn it loose yet. You still believe that even though I turned it loose, I feel like I'm still less than. I, the Bible is clear that any man that accepts Jesus Christ you become a new creature. God. Old things are passed away. Y'all need to hear that. All things become new. So, 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 so when you accept him and when you walk away from that old, 
you become a new creature. Your value gets restarted. Oh, that's good. Yeah. You become new. And look, people are going to try to bring up your old. Man, don't worry about that. That just lets you know you're in the right place. You're moving down the right path. Because anytime you start flourishing, you're going to have haters. You're going to have people that try to tear you down. Who needs to come today? Come on. God has saw you, is seeing you today. He's seeing you on this worship platform. He knows you've been bent over for a mighty long time. If you're tired of carrying that weight, you need to go ahead and put your name in that chat and say, Pastor, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm tired of being devalued. I'm tired of being lower than a footprint. I'm ready to take my rightful place. I'm ready to be a part of God's family and know that I'm a part of his family and reap the benefits of being a part of his family. Come on, you, you've been out there too long. You've been doing that thing too long. Come on, it, today is your day. It, it, it was that woman's day, 18 years in the making. It was her day. And look, she did not let her day pass her by. She went straight to Jesus. Today is your day. Come on, you need to come on. You need to come on. You don't need to wait for next Sunday. You need to do it right now. Things are happening too. COVID numbers are going up. You don't know what tomorrow will bring. You need to come right now. You need to come on. Come on. I, I'm, I'm tired of playing with this thing. You need to come on. You need to come on and give your life to God. You need to understand where you're going to spend eternity. Come on. He loves you. He loves you. He's not going to judge you. He's going to accept you just as you are. And then he's going to fix you up. He's going to clean you from the inside out. Come on. Come on. You can put that bottle down. You, you can put that, that funny cigarette down. You ain't got to put that in your nose. You, you ain't got to, you need to put the needle down. You don't need to shoot that in your veins. You need to put the phone down and stop making that call later in the midnight hour. You need to get off of social media, stop watching pornographic material. You need to come on. You need to get your mind right. You need to come on. Jesus is waiting for you. You need to stop lying about where you are and how you see life. And you know that you're telling yourself and everybody else around you a lie. Come on, be truthful. Come on, come on, come on. God is, hey, today is your day. Man, I feel it. I'm trying to let it go, magic, but I feel it, man. Somebody online has been trying to fake their way into heaven. Can I tell you, you can't fake your way into heaven. You've got to get real and authentic with him and say, Lord, I got a problem. I'm weak in this area. I'm having problems with my flesh, God. You need to get it. Help me, Lord. I, I can't do this by myself. God sees you. He's calling you. Will you come? Come on, tag me. Tag me. Say, yes, Pastor, I'm ready. I'm ready to receive the salvation of Jesus Christ. Maybe you're ready to be a part of this branch of Zion. We would love to have you. Come on. We, we just, we're a Bible-based church. We, we like to teach Jesus. We like to talk about the Holy Spirit. We like to talk about God, our creator. We like to talk about how he takes us through journeys and still gets us on top. Who needs to come? Amen. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this message. We thank you for what you have done in this place. I pray now, Lord God, that even those who are thinking about typing their name in the platform. I pray that you will move 
in their lives right now. Have them put their name in there, saying, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Lord, I'm tired of doing what I've been doing. Help us right now, Lord God. Help us right now, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 While we're transitioning, I would ask that you go ahead and get your Holy Communion. Bible says that we are to as much as we can take this holy communion in remembrance of him he says that we are to remember what he did for us on that old rugged cross on a hill called Golgotha he says that but, but before we do this we need to examine ourselves. We need to consecrate ourselves so that when we take this communion, we do not take it from a place of devaluing what he did for us on the cross. He said, the reason why many of you are sick and many of you die is because you take this communion unworthily of my name and with my sacrifice. So I pray now that we will consecrate ourselves, that we will ask for the forgiveness that we need. I'm asking right now that if I've done wrong to anyone, I'm asking for forgiveness right now. I'm praying, Lord God, that you will remove any unrighteousness that may be in my heart. To my amazing wife who is on this platform, I'm asking for forgiveness, honey. I know we've been together in the COVID, in the COVID house. Junior, we've been there almost four months now, Junior. Whew. Lord, help us. She's been my project manager, Magic. Sometimes she gets on my project management nerves, sir. And we say things to each other that... It was not friendly. So I'm asking, honey, forgive me. You know I love you more than, more than life itself. I love you to life, so please forgive me because I don't want to take this communion unworthily to my kids who I've been locked in the house with too. <laughs> Lord, help us. Lord, help the Pearl household, y'all. Help us. Help us. Hey, some of y'all laughing at me, but some of y'all households are the same way. <laughs> And we're asking God to consecrate us, help us to continue to be strong families, can be the strong church family that God is looking for in the times that we're living in. Matthew 26 and 26 says, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed. For many for the remissions of sin. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Amen. Dear God, we thank you for what you have done. We thank you for how you have blessed us. And now, Lord God, as we come to take part of this holy sacrament called communion, we pray, Lord God, that you will bless this bread and this wine, which are physical representation of your spiritual body, and the blood that you shed it for us. I pray now, Lord God, that you would take it from a physical state to a spiritual state, Lord God, that represents cleansing, that represents healing, that represents power, that represents your love that you showed toward us. And we thank you, Lord God, for what you did on the cross. No way that we could be here standing today if it had not been for what you have done. So, Lord God, we praise you, we glorify you, we thank you for everything. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.
So on the same night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it and he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. So let us eat together. Likewise, he took the cup and said, this is my blood, which was shed for you. He said, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine till I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. So let us drink together. After they had supped, they sung a hymn and they went into the Mount of Olives. We can't go into the Mount of Olives, but we can go tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus Christ. Look, Van Street, we just want to say we love you. May God continue to smile and bless you. As we learned last week, may the Lord bless and keep you. May his face smile upon you. May he give you the peace out of the graciousness of his heart. We just want to say we love you all. We'll see you uh, tomorrow night on our prayer call. We'll see you Wednesday at Bible study and right back here next week for our Sunday morning worship service. Love you all. God bless.